Welcome to our preview of Code Monkey Going Bananas, a coding game for kids that will be launching on Kickstarter later this year. Thank you to Taito Games for sending us a prototype copy of this game to check out. No, no other compensation was provided for this preview. Code Monkey Going Bananas was designed by Sharon Katz and will be coming to Kickstarter later this year in 2021. If funded successfully, it will be published by Taito Games. Now, this game is from the popular kids coding website, CodeMonkey.com, and is designed for two to four players, age seven or up, with games taking anywhere from 15 minutes to, unfortunately, over an hour, despite the box claiming a 20-minute playtime. Now, at this time, I wasn't able to find what price point the finished game will be at or where the Kickstarter will be starting at, so I do apologize for that. Now, despite only being a preview, they have certainly put some effort into this yes. product already. Now, in Code Monkey Going Bananas, you start by building a jungle made out of hex tiles with die pips in each hex. Six numbered trees, each with some bananas tokens on them, are added to the jungle, and players place their monkeys on a randomly rolled starting hex. Simultaneously, players will roll dice and use those along with action tiles to program their monkeys' moves, with the goal being to collect the most bananas. Optional play modes include traps, gaining more actions, and a take that magic card system. While we don't normally do unboxing videos for prototype games, we did record one for this game because as I mentioned, it was well produced mm -hmm. and we didn't realize it was a prototype when it showed yes. us. If you're interested in seeing the components in this prototype, check out Code Monkeys Going Bananas prototype unboxing video on YouTube. Yeah, one of the things that confuses me, and it was my first hint, was there was no box back. And I'm like, who's going to buy this without a box back? Yeah, it's because it's a prototype. Now, I have been in contact with the designers and publishers over this game, and I do know there is going to be at least one thing that will be improved, but they do expect the quality to be about the same as what's in this box. Now, the thing that's going to be improved is the method the monkey's tails attach. Now, this is actually a result of me sharing my video with them because my copy came with a monkey with a broken tail, which was very easy to fix with glue, but they actually now have redesigned the monkey, so that shouldn't be a problem going into the future. Now, due to this being a prototype, I don't want to say too much about the component quality just because there's a chance it may change. Now, I will say, as it stands, this game looks amazing on the table with wooden monkeys and these surprisingly sturdy wooden trees. Now, the magic card magnet thing is a little odd, but I honestly can't think of a different way they could have pulled off that same mechanic, so I guess that works. Indeed, and due to the size of the magnets they're using, they completely avoid the swallowing hazard that so many magnetic game pieces yes. suffer from. Now, that we have some idea of what you get in the game, well, at least in the prototype, how about you give us an overview of play? All right, so the goal of Code Monkeys Going Bananas is to be the monkey with the most bananas once there's no more bananas on the tree. You start every game by building the jungle, in turn, players place jungle tiles so that each tile only connects by one hex to the other tiles. Banana trees are placed in the empty spaces created so that each tree touches at least three hexes. I mean, if you're going to have a game with monkeys and bananas, how can most bananas not be the end scoring? Yeah, I'm not sure what else you'd do. Now, Code Monkey Going Bananas includes a number of different levels of play, each adding something new to the game. And I think this will make the most sense. I, I was I was debating whether just give you all of it. Here's all the things. But I think it'll actually make more sense if I just start with the basic game and then list all the potential add-ons afterwards. So in a basic game, all players get a programming board, two dice, and two action tokens. The tokens are swing and down. Each round, players roll their dice and then program up to three moves using these dice and those tokens. When everyone's done, players take their programmed actions with everyone completing the first action, then everyone doing their second action, and finally everyone doing their third. So, a robo-rally in the jungle, really. Yeah, though much simpler. Your programming here is much easier than anything seen in robo-rally. Now, the various actions that can happen are moving a monkey. You put a die on a programming spot. When that spot activates, when it's your turn in that phase, you must move your monkey as far as possible up to the number on the die. If you play a five, you need to move five unless you can't, unless it's physically impossible. Note, you can't pass other monkeys or move through a spot with a tree. 
you have to go along the path. Note there is the swing action for getting past those trees. Now, the most complicated part of the rule that takes a bit to remember when you first start playing is if after the moving, you end in a hex where the number on the hex added to the number on the die you used adds up to seven, you get to climb up the tree, which is called a seven nana. So is there, am I missing something? Is seven nana supposed to be a reference to something? Do they indicate in the game what that no. might be? I, I have no idea what seven nana means. All I will say is this stuck in my kids' heads. Like that wasn't a word they forgot. Every time they did it, they would go one, two, three, four, seven nana. Like, like it definitely stuck out. I could not find any reason for something to be called seven nana. No clue. Okay. There is a Japanese steakhouse called seven nana. Uh, maybe. <laughs> so I this is a game that has anything is... to do with it. Yeah, like, like Code Monkeys is a North American company. It's I don't, I don't think it's a translation issue in this case. So swing is the next possible action. This allows you to move through the trees. Um, basically, it lets you move onto a tree and to, through it to a spot. So you don't actually collect anything. You're not climbing up top. And what they say is you're swinging from the branches below the tree. So it's through a tree to another spot. Now, you can do this two ways. You can just put a swing, program swing, and then you do that one move. Or you can swing as part of movement. So you put your die down with the swing token under it. Now, when you do that, the tree spot doesn't count cost any movement. So it's a good way to get around the board quickly or to dodge over spots like where monkeys could be standing in the way. Next section is down. When you're in a tree, you got to get down. When you come down from a tree, that's actually when you collect the banana tokens, if there are any present. No, you can't collect a banana from the same tree twice in a row. Unfortunately, the game doesn't have any way to track where you last got one. So that's something you have to remember. Now, there are two ways to go down. There's a down tile that lets you go down in any hex adjacent to the tree you're in. Or you can spend a movement die, which moves you down to a hex with that number on it. So you need to get off the tree to get a banana from it. Um, last time I checked, bananas are really, really high up in the top of banana trees well you have to climb up with your previous action which is a seventh banana and when you come down you bring the banana with you okay now play continues until the last banana is taken from the last tree and the game ends immediately so when that down action happens it just stops look how many bananas everyone has the player with the most bananas wins Oddly, there's no tiebreaker listed in the rules whatsoever. Being a kid's game, we just went, everyone wins. Fair. Now, in addition to these basic rules, as I mentioned earlier, there are a number of different modules you can add to make the game more interesting. Now, the rule book has a, a list on the last page showing like one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to seven, telling you which items to add first um, in their suggested order. And here are the various modules possibly in that order possibly not the first is missions missions are represented by a set of numbered tokens matching the numbers on the trees one through six they're shuffled face down at the beginning of the game every player selects three and reveals them you then put them in order next to your programming board in the order of your choosing during the game you're trying to complete these missions by getting bananas from the trees shown on the number on the mission tokens now at the end of the game if a player has filled all three of their mission tokens, they get one extra banana. If you manage to fill them in order, you get three bananas. So one extra banana doesn't sound like a lot. How many are there to collect? All right, I'd have to do the math and I'm gonna fail at this, but there are two tall trees that have three each, so that's six. And then there are four short trees with two bananas each, so that's eight, so six plus eight total bananas. 14 bananas. 14 bananas. And then bonuses. And I, I agree. One doesn't seem like a lot. Next are the rules for traps. Once a monkey collects their first banana, they unlock their trap, which is this uh, hexagonal tile that overlays on top of one of the hexes. At the end of each round, in player order, players place out their trap if it's not out or move it if it is there. Traps are placed either on a hex matching the number they were already on. So if it was on a three, you move it to another three on the map or into the hex that a player seven nanded from that turn. Now, while moving, if any monkey falls into a trap, their turn immediately ends. And here's kind of like the down action. When they climb out of the trap, they lose a banana, which randomly respawns one of the trees. Thematically, it's the trees are growing more bananas. 
So monkeys dropping banana peels for other monkeys to slip on and throw a banana out of their hands. I did yep. it. That actually works. Yeah, that fits. Next is my favorite action tile of the entire game. And I honestly say unlock this as quick as you can. This is the loop. This makes it feel like more of a coding game. This gives players lots of new options in programming. The loop, when placed in the second programming spot, has you do your first spot's action again. More interestingly, if you put it in the third slot, though, when you get there, you're going to do your first, then your second action without any monkeys going in between. So you get to loop your actions. No, you can actually, there's, we'll get to it in a second, but there's a fourth spot. If you're using that, you can put the loop there and you do your first three actions over again. While monkey equals hungry, do get banana. Next is the magic card. Uh, not quite sure why they went with the name on this one. Everyone takes the magnetic card, Standy, and puts it in front of them so they can't see the front that has a tree on it with six numbers. The player on their left then uses a washer to select one of those three numbers. Now, you can't see whatever number that was, right? It's, it's, it's the other players can see it, you can't. When collecting to take a banana from the tree whose number is selected on their magic card, you don't get it. Uh, we called the magic bananas that went poof. Technically, by the rules, it's a rotten banana. So you go to get a banana. Oh, 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 you got a rotten banana. That banana now respawns on a random tree. The player on the left now selects a new tree. So it has to change every time. So I, when I saw those magnetic cards in the unboxing, I assumed they were a core component in the game, not just an, an optional extra. Uh, it's It's quite a component to just be something extra in the game see now i do think that these levels the goal is to get to the end and use all of them like it's not written as a now take this out and put this in it's add this add this add this add this add this so i think a full game of code monkey going bananas would use this every game okay. now it's not at all what i expected i thought it was going to be for programming like i'm going to go here hidden and reveal it and that's not at all what it was for now, next thing you can unlock is another swing action. Pretty simple. You get another swing token that can be used for programming. Trust me, that's huge. Like being able to swing twice really makes it much easier to get around the jungle, avoid traps and other monkeys. Another great one is three dice. When you first unlock this, you still only have three actions. So that just gives you better chance of not rolling in, you know, two numbers you can't use. But once you unlock the fourth action, you need this third die to be able to program enough stuff. Which is, of course, the last thing you can unlock as far as programming is concerned is all four actions, where you can now use the four spot on your programming board to do a fourth action each round. The last part of the game, which I will admit we did not actually try out, is to throw in the timer. Now, rules as written, the last player, so first player is always the youngest, sorry, Sean, last player, it'd be the person to their right, sets a five to seven minute timer on some device. And when it ends, a random banana is removed from a tree and removed from the game. Now, I dig that because it puts a time limit on the game. But what it doesn't say is, like, that's all it says. It doesn't say what to do next. And I honestly think it's supposed to repeat. Like, now someone's supposed to set another timer, and then another banana will disappear. It doesn't say that anywhere. What I would suggest is making it so it's the player in last that sets that timer. So, and they ex they expect over time for you to add all of these yes. uh, and just slowly add them in so you're not overwhelming the kids then yeah exactly and like i said the final game should be with all of them and i did play it that way a couple times they, they we just didn't use the timer it just one i didn't have my phone and we had to set a timer and everything. all right well now that we know how to play what are your thoughts on this programming game from codemonkey.com all right, so first off, caveat, uh, whatever, disclosure, I'm a huge fan of programming games. Uh, some of my favorite board games of all time are Robo Rally, Lords of Zidid. I even dig Cult Express with its silly theme. Now, my kids haven't played any of the go those games. Shame on me. I really should introduce them. They're old enough for all those now. They are huge fans of coding in general. So when I heard that Code Monkey, a fairly well-respected site, uh, about teaching kids how to code was releasing a board game, I jumped at the chance to check it out because I thought my kids would dig it. And they did. They loved this game. Like right now, as we speak, my oldest daughter is over at her grandmother's uh, who also lives with it, with uh, her aunt or whatever, Deanna's sister. And she brought the game with them to play and say, but I really want to bring it. So I had her leave the lid of the box behind so we could have it for our backdrop tonight. The game's not over there. Now, at the same time, my younger daughter is mad because the oldest got to take Code Monkeys and now she can't play it. So for our kids, at least, Code Monkey Going Bananas was a complete hit. 
All right, well, that certainly says something about the game design. As I admit, I haven't been sold on it so far, but then I'm 100% not the target market. Yeah, agreed. Now, that said, looking at this as an experienced gamer who's played thousands of games, this game does have some flaws that I think parents in particular should be aware of. While we loved the basic game, the, the, there's no special rules. You program three moves. It's lightning quick. Game's taking less than 50 minutes. All of the other modules kind of felt that they just bloated the game. They added complexity, and they made the game longer, significantly longer. And I kind of missed that initial experience when we just played a couple rounds with the basic rules, running around. It was fast and furious. I do miss that a bit. Now, the biggest jump in playtime is adding traps. Another is playing with four players. Because the more monkeys there are, the more often you end up in each other's way. The thing is with these passes, they're straight pass. There might be a little drought out, but like the way you have to assemble it, so each tile when you touch the other tile on one spot, means there's no circles. There's no ways around. There's no loops you can do. So it's hard to get around the other monkeys. And then traps add to this. So you now have not only monkeys in your way, you have traps in your way. So like it almost feels like half the tiles in the dungeon are covered. It doesn't get that bad, but it feels that way. Now, this intensifies a ton. We are down to the last few bananas. They tend to be in one or two trees. And while everyone's trying to get to those same trees and trying to stop everyone from getting in those trees and everyone's just getting every other one's way. We actually had one game go for over an hour with players not able to gather the last two bananas just because it just kept getting blocked and blocked and trapped and blocked. And then when a trap happens, I lost a banana. And now there's one way over here too. And okay, someone went and grabbed that one. We're still down to the same two last bananas. Well, from that description, the game seems like it might get pretty old if you're in that same game for an hour. Yeah, I suggested multiple times that we maybe just give the game to the person with the most bananas at the time and restart, but my kids weren't interested in that. Now, the rule book says add traps during your second play of the game or the second step. You might play the first a bunch of times. I say no, like, like save them for like the absolute last thing you add or at least wait until you have loops. That way, there's a way to avoid those traps. Uh, they just make the game longer, like, like they're longer because they block people, but they also cycle the bananas back into the game. Now, another thing I consider trying was remove that. So you're not cycling them back in. A, a banana loss due to a trap is just removed from the game. And at least that way, the number of bananas keeps going down. And if you're down to those last couple ones, well, maybe they just get lost. Now, the magic card, well, interesting, had a similar effect. It, again, took bananas away from players and put them back in. So it just kept recycling the market. Now, I saw that as something that kind of falsely inflated the game, made it longer. My kids loved it, though. They love that module. They love laughing out loud whenever someone gets hit by a rotten banana. They, they're they like, oh, 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 and they get all excited. And you're like, oh, oh, I think you played a rotten banana on the tree I'm heading towards. And then they they cheer when it happens. So fair enough. I mean, rotten bananas are fun if you don't have to clean them up. Yes. We just save them all so we can make banana bread. <laughs> now, the other major issue I have with this game and the biggest issue, honestly, I have with this game is this is a programming game. It's sold as a, like, a, I don't know if they use the STEM term, but like they're, they're trying to sell it as, as an educational game where you're going to learn coding. The problem is your actual program that you make for your monkey doesn't matter most of the time. And this is due to the fact how rapidly the board state changes and how easy it is to block other monkeys, both again with your monkey or your traps. Well, there's usually a pretty good chance your first planned out move. I'm going to go six and do this, grab this. We'll go off as planned because it's your first move. And it shouldn't fail if you're the first player. If it fails on your first, if your first player and your first move doesn't get you where you wanted, that, that's on you. But once you get to the second, third, and fourth moves, there's almost no chance anything you planned during that planning programming phase will actually happen. Something will have changed in the board state so you can't do what your program was set up to do. Now, that said, when your plans are ruined, there is a fun element of trying to figure out how to adopt. Like, like you're stuck, you're, you're, you're programmed, you can't change your dice, you can't move things around, but how can you then use what's there well is kind of fun. And I've even had it where a bit of broken code 
the, like a bit of my code that gets broken by another player actually leads to a better turn because I was just planning on moving five, but now that you did this, I can now actually go here in seven nana. The thing is, like, like that's a fun moment, but this is a game about coding, and that just doesn't fit that goal of teaching the kids to code or giving them a coding experience. Deanna, in particular, um, liked this even less than I did. She hated the fact that you could spend minutes planning out the perfect turn, the turn where you're going to use both swing actions, you're going to go down after every banana, you're going to collect three bananas all in one go, only to have it ruined by the player before her doing something that ruins the plan in step one. Yeah, I, I'm, I question rewarding accidental success in coding. Mm. Planning and thoughtful progression, logical steps, are how good, clean code gets written. I don't want my web browser working because someone's code was broken and turned out to end up being better that way by someone else's code. <laughs> yeah. Now, despite all these issues, uh, my wife and I both found code monkeys uh, going bananas. Like we found these problems, but my kids love it. And I can't ignore that. I, I can't ignore the fact that, my kids love ruining another player's plans. They giggle every time someone tries to go down when they're not in a tree. And they have this whole story about how their monkeys or their squirrels described as monkeys, disguised as monkeys, hiding, trying to dig and hide the bananas. And they talk about broken code. And they even now went and grabbed this Playmobil thing that plays a wah, wah, wah sound effect. And then they hit it every time someone codes broke. Like they, they, they love it. Um, they love when someone's forced to fall into a trap. Because remember, you always have to move your full movement. Uh, if possible. And well, if that movement's into a trap, you have no choice. You can't just go a different way. Um, they both asked to play this game multiple times since I taught them how to play. They're not sick of it yet. Seeing as this game is made for kids and not old Gronyard game players, it hit the mark. Yeah, so I, I'm torn now because it sounds like for the target market, it is a solid, fun game. But it's from a company that's supposed to be teaching logical progression and practical programming in real languages. Mm -hmm. And they put out a game that doesn't really reinforce that. I mean, there's aspects of it there mm -hmm. without question, but it isn't as much of a focus as I would have expected coming from Code Monkeys. Yeah. And to be honest, if this wasn't from Code Monkeys, I might not have as much of a problem with it. Because like I said, when your code is broken and you manage to find out a way to make it work that's very rewarding but that shouldn't be rewarding in code like you're not fixing your code you're dealing with the code you had now right. if there's some rule where you could like possibly fix your code using what's left or something and there's some kind of iteration that would all fit coding but yeah it's not there now to not be overly ne negative um this game looked great like i only have the prototype and i have to assume that the production will at least be the same if not better I love the way this game looks on the table. I took some great pictures. I'll be sharing on my Instagram. Like this is just a striking game. Um, now there are a couple things I think could be improved. Uh, like the trees only have the numbers on one side. And once you're using the magic uh, card, it really helps if everyone can see the numbers on the trees. I'm not quite sure why they're not on the top. And it would be nice to have the hexes, not only numbered, but color coded. And just even if it was lighter browns, like one was the lightest brown and six was the darkest. Because every now and then when the monkeys are like where the monkeys are standing, make the pips hard to see. But everything works like like, OK, can you just tell me what tree that is is fine? And is that a three or a four? Or I move your monkey for a second. So it works. I was really impressed by this prototype, like, like overall, uh, as it stands, Code Monkeys Going Bananas is a great looking, quite fun game, despite its flaws. Well, I didn't love it at all i i had fun playing with my kids though my kids enjoyed it i'm not the one that's supposed to be having fun i'm not the target market my kids are and they adore it since the copy i played was a prototype though i do kind of hope that some of these issues we did find do get wrinkled out a bit before the retail version hits out i'm hoping you know comments on the kickstarter when it goes live as well as i i don't know if the company will check out this review or not but if they do i hope they take some of what we had to say to heart like if you've got kids that are into coding, especially if they know CodeMonkey, like CodeMonkey is a brand. People, it's been around since 2014. Kids have learned to code through CodeMonkey. 
I think it's a great choice. If you've got a kid that's already into the Code Monkey brand, now you have a game to play with them. Yeah, it's uh, heavy on the, the the somewhat educational for for my money. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely. I don't know. I I, I have a hard, I'm not even sure if it's if you consider it. I, and to be honest, I don't know if they're marketing it as educational, but it's definitely marketed as coding game. Now, if you're thinking of getting your kids into programming, this might be a good way to start, like just to get them excited about coding and get them playing with monkeys. Um, they do have the added bonus. Uh, the Kickstarter is not live yet, but the, something they've announced on the, the pre-launch page is that if you back Code Monkey, the game on Kickstarter, you are going to get a few months of CodeMonkey.com for free. So I don't know the price on that. Like maybe that actually even works out to a good deal and is cheaper than Code Monkey normally costs. What I do worry just a bit is that they might learn bad habits like, like, oh, I don't have to code that easy because I'll be able to fix it later would not be the lesson you want them to learn from this game. Yeah, as a fundraiser and branding tool for what is otherwise a really great program. My kids have used Code Monkey through school. It's, it's hard to complain too much, but <clears throat> there's still a taste. Yeah. So if you're looking for a detailed programming game that's going to help teach your kids to code, you're not going to find that here. Code Monkey Going Bananas features a very rudimentary coding system a system that combines with take that elements and interactions with other players that will regularly break the code. Now, overall, I thought Code Monkey was an engaging mix of programming, take that and random elements that seemed to mix well for my kids. And in that case, you know what? My kids got a new game they love. So I am really happy about that aspect. Well, that's it for our look at a prototype copy of Code Monkey Going Bananas. We welcome you to read more about this game in the review section of the blog over at tabletopbellhop.com.